Okay guys, in this video what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how this system actually works. This is my add-on video that I was speaking about on the other video. I was kind of talking about how to do this, but this is going to be an explanation of the actual system where I can control speed and I can control that it bounces back and forth infinitely. And I'm just going to reach down here and hit this switch on the other end and then control and speed right here. Okay, so there's this. And here's the thing I had in the other video that I talked a lot about that shows you exactly where the wires need to go. This does not tell you how this works at all. This right here explains how this system actually works. And as I explained in the other video that's attached to this one, I'm not an electrician. I really don't know what I'm doing, but with the help of several websites and mainly my brother who is an electrician, I kind of understand what's happening in this system, so I'm going to try to explain what's happening. And you may not get it at first, you may have to go back and and look at the different components and think about it. The motor is the most important thing, it's what's actually spinning and moving the carriage back and forth. Now in the other video I talked about there are six, there are six main components and I want to show those six main components in this. You have your motor is the number one main component. Here's the relay, that's the triple pole double throw relay. You have your two switches, your two momentary switches. So that's one, two, three, four. The fifth one is the speed control, the PWM. And then your sixth component is your power source, your battery. So the motor, the power from the motor is going to go through this path, through the relay, through the speed control, back to your power source. Several things, first of all, this relay has to have a full 12 volts to operate for it to be able to switch back and forth. And I'm going to play a little video showing you in the relay those little contacts actually move, moving back and forth. And they just really barely move back and forth. And that's talking about these three things right here switching back and forth. This shows the path of the power for the relay. If this, is n if this path is not completed all the way through, through positive and negative, then this relay is not energized. And whenever there is no power going through this relay, these switches are going to be in this up position. They're going to be hitting one, two, and three. Okay, let's let's follow the path here, and I will show you what's going to happen. At this point, the motor plus, if we follow this through, is going to go here. It's going to hit this one, and it's going to go over and hit the positive or the pole one of the motor. This one is going to go up here, and it's going to hit three. It's going to go down here and hit pole two, and that's going to make it spin one way. Now, if these switches switch down, and they will whenever switch two is activated, these three will switch down, and this will no longer be hitting one, it'll be hitting four. This will no longer be hitting two, it'll be hitting five. And this will no longer be hitting three, it'll be hitting six. Now follow the path of that. This time positive is going to go to eight to five, and then down to this side. So now the positive is going to the negative, and the positive or negative here is going to go up here to the positive. So see what happens when this switches is it flip flops what's happening. Whenever it's here, the positive is going to positive, negative is going to negative. When they switch down, positive is going to negative and negative is going to positive. And that is reversing the polarity and it's causing the motor to spin different directions. Whenever it's going through two and three, it's spinning one way. Whenever this is going through five and six, it's going to be spinning a different way. Now, with the way the system is set up, whenever it starts, this relay is not energized because the power path is not completed. The circuit is not complete through 10 and 11 here. Okay, so here's what's happening. This is coming from 12 volts, and it comes through this place here. And at this point, you can see it's broken. This is the way it is to start off with. And so there is no power making it back here to complete the circuit. See, it would have to go here, 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 back through here, and that would complete the circuit. But at this point, that is broken. Okay, so here's what happens is whenever the carriage heads this way, and you need to make sure it's headed to switch to, and again, if it's not headed to switch to when it starts, you need to just go to to your motor and just switch these two wires. So the one that was going to positive needs to be switched to the one that's negative and the one that was at negative needs to be switched to the one that's at positive. 
and that'll get you headed in the right direction. So you want it to head this way. So what's going to happen is as this, as the carriage goes and it hits this switch, it's going to push this down and it's going to close that. This is still closed. So that completes the circuit. So now at this point, as it pushes it down, that completes that. It's able to go there. And that energizes the relay. And whenever that energizes, it switches all three of these down. Now, whenever all three of these are switched down, then the power path is completed through this. Going up here, through here, and then going through here to this, and that completes the path. Because what's going to happen is whenever the carriage leaves this, this circuit's going to open back up. But since these switched down, this one is still switched down and it's keeping that power path, keeping this thing energized. And that is called being electrically held. That this now, as this switches down and it was receiving power, it's staying there until something changes it. So your power path is completed through here now at that point. Whenever the carriage gets back to switch one, what's going to happen is it's going to open this switch and then that's going to break it on the negative side. That breaks the path. So no longer will it be able to trace through here, around to here. It'll get to there. And then at that point, it's broken right there and it can't trace back. So then this loses power. And when this loses power, then these switch back. And when these switch back, that reverses the polarity going to the motor. Okay? So that's what's happening. As it's at this point, it's spinning one way. Whenever this is completed, it switches down, and that flip-flops the polarity, and it makes the motor spin a different direction. Whenever it gets back over here and hits this, it breaks the circuit this loses power. These switch back up. The polarity flip-flops again. It spins one way. It heads back here. It completes the path. This is energized. These switch down. It goes over here. It hits this one. It breaks it. This is not energized anymore. It switches up, and it just does that over and over and over again. That's what's happening. This is the main thing, is whenever you get your system set up, you need to make sure that this heads towards switch two. And how do you know which one is switch two? It is the switch that has a wire connected to normally open. Switch one is the one that has a wire connected to normally closed. And the carriage needs to be headed to switch two when it starts. If it's not headed towards switch two, unplug the system immediately. Just And then you are going to actually switch the wires yourself so that it heads that way. Because if it goes towards switch one to start off with, you're going to tear stuff up because it's going to get there and nothing's going to happen. It's not going to change anything because this is already broken. And if you break this, you're just double breaking it. It's still not completing anything. It's not changing it. It's just going to want to keep going that way. And the motor's just going to keep turning and just tear it up going that way. You want this to go to switch two first. If it hits switch two first, it completes that. And then all of this stuff starts to happen to keep the, to keep the carriage bouncing back and forth. And then you've got your speed control where you can control the speed. That's that system in a nutshell. I hope that made sense. I know there's a lot going on there. It took me a long time. My brother looked at this and nearly immediately knew everything that was going on. It took me two or three days looking at it and him talking to me and telling me about uh, probably 10 different times about what's happening for it finally to click. But I think I got all the major components in there so you'll understand what's happening within this system. This is Mooney B123 coming to you today. Thanks for watching.